Okay, this is just a short video to accompany the, uh, the written description. I think sometimes it's a little bit easier to, to, to show uh, and discuss than it is to type out in a Facebook forum. Um, but uh, really what we're focusing on is lower body mechanics in this um, hammer throw and how they relate to the golf swing. It's real easy when you look at the hammer throw to see a guy spin it around and then let go of the hammer and think that the whole thing is just about rotation, creating a whole lot of rotation and then just randomly letting go of the hammer. Um, that's what it looks like visually. Unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but uh, different from what we see, there's some very complex things going on that start with these primary drivers. The idea of primary drivers are that we're looking more to the, um, the cause of what's, what's happening in the movement rather than the effect. We're not looking at the superficial motion uh, and trying to ascertain what's going on, but we're trying to get down underneath the superficial to the primary uh, driver or the primary mechanisms of the movement strategy. Those, for this case and for almost all swing throw patterns, are going to be broken down into lower body mechanics, ground reaction force, um, core mechanics, uh, uh, taking force application and creating sort of use as like a differential, creating rotational speed, and then uh, accelerating the, either the arm or, the, uh, or an implement, so uh, sort of distal end acceleration uh, as the third primary. So what's uh, kind of misleading, again, what's kind of misleading about the, um, about the hammer throws, it looks like a guy's just spinning around, spinning around, spinning around, and then just lets go of the hammer at some point in timing. But really what he's doing from a lower body perspective, and this is very, very critical for understanding the golf swing movement, is he is um, creating essentially forward movement or forward momentum. So yes, he is spinning around as he goes from one side of the throwing area to the other side, but what he's really doing is he's creating a forward momentum of his center of mass or of his mass of his body. He's creating essentially a forward momentum. Okay? And what the body does, the movement strategy behind this is the body uses a, a, a momentum, a forward momentum, to then facilitate force application. So what ends up happening is, and if you, if you can go through the video, stop action, frame to frame to frame, or you can use some measurement like 3D motion analysis or force plate data, you'll see this happen. And what, what essentially happens is, as he flies towards the sort of release area, creates a lot of forward momentum, and then when he gets to the release area, slams on the brakes, essentially. So he's got forward speed or forward momentum that he then decelerates dramatically, and it's that deceleration that he uses to, to stomp into the ground with the, with the lower body. The reaction to that, the ground reaction to that stomping into the ground is then used to create torque or rotational movement essentially at the pelvis, okay? And so what we're really looking at is the ability to, to create forward momentum and turn that forward momentum into rotational torque or rotational force by using the ground reaction to our, our pushing into the ground. This is fundamental to any throw or swing pattern, okay? It doesn't matter. In golf, we talk about the momentum as being weight shift. Or, or, or various other terms, weight shift is probably the most common or most popular. So weight shift is really about creating momentum and then using that momentum to create torque. So you can imagine, say, let's take a more obvious uh, uh, action like, say, uh, javelin. The, the movements are virtually identical, slightly different context. One's a little more obvious, the javelin, you run, 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 and then what do they do? They don't just keep running at full speed, they slow down. Now, they don't completely stop, obviously, but as they're thrown, they're pretty much dead stopped. They're, they're, so they've got all this forward momentum, and then they stop, and they create a rotational movement at the pelvis, which then facilitates a, a rotational movement at the core, and then they deliver the, the javelin. Now, they may continue forward a little bit, uh, either during a little bit or, or after release, but they've used a dramatic halting or slowing down to fling the javelin, fling the arm and fling the javelin. It's not as obvious in a hammer throw, but the exact same thing is occurring. They are, are moving quickly to the throw area, creating a forward momentum. They use that forward momentum to then stomp into the ground and then use that stomping into the ground, the ground reaction to that, that deceleration. In other words, if I'm flying this way and I slow down dramatically, even if I don't stop, if I just slow down dramatically, I'm pushing into the ground with force. So think about it. If I weigh 180 pounds and I stand on uh, the floor or, or on a scale, the, the scale says 180 pounds. If I push real quick into the ground, the scale, let's say we're on an analog scale, the scale will go from 180 up to maybe 280. You'll, you'll get a big jump in, in the weight, which is a big jump in the f downward force that's being applied. So that, that, that quick uh, 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 movement into the ground increases the force output. So if I move very quickly to one side and then I slow down dramatically, I'm doing the same thing as if I press down in that scale. I'm creating a high level of force. 
the ground reaction to that pushes back with the same force that I push into the ground, and it's the pushing back that we then use to create essentially a force couple or, or some torque at the pelvis. That torque is then going to stimulate core engagement and go up from there. We'll talk about that as we move on uh, in our, our discussion. But the thing to understand at this point is that what the, what the, the, the uh, hammer thrower is doing is creating a forward momentum and using that forward momentum to then create ground reaction, which then is, is utilized to create a rotational movement of the pelvis uh, or the torque. Now it's a little misleading in the hammer throw because now in a javelin you're sort of running this direction, right? And then it looks more like a throw pattern. So this one you're already rotating. So it seems like, well, well why would I need to create a force to, to create, uh, or why, why do I need to uh, create rotation when I already have rotation? Well, the initial rotation, again, is getting this big heavy implement moving while we're creating our momentum. Otherwise, it'd be near impossible to get something that heavy and that cumbersome on a, on a rope or you know, on, a, on a, a, a cord to, to, to get moving um, prior to, to launching it. So we're getting the, the implement moving while we're creating our momentum. But once we stop, we're actually dissociating. So there's a little extra rotation at the pelvis uh, against the differential of the upper thoracic, which then engages the core, which is how we're going to facilitate this kinetic link uh, activity. But again, just to go back, just to reiterate, what we're really talking about is creating forward momentum, using the forward momentum or the, the, the halting or the, the deceleration of that forward momentum to create ground reaction force that allows us to produce uh, rotational torque or rotational forces at the pelvis that, that now allows us to start to create a kinetic link sequence which will allow us to launch uh, the, um, the implement.